Hello, my name is Andrew Peel, and welcome to the second development update video. As I mentioned in my last video, Julian Icell is working on the official Blender Asset Management Engine. The majority of what he's developed so far is a lot of backend code of creating new data types specifically for assets to make it more efficient when browsing and reading external data. So there's a lot of interesting things happening there, but it's still in the early stages of development. Julian has mentioned it'll likely be several weeks before the basics of the asset management engine is available. My focus has still been creating prototypes for different types of libraries. So in this video, I wanted to do a quick demonstration and show some of these libraries in action and showcase a new library concept called Particle Painter. This library allows users to maintain their own library of particle systems, which can easily be dropped into the scene and painted onto objects. So to demonstrate this, I'll create a simple nature scene, and this will allow you to see how using an asset library can really speed up your workflow. All right, so before I start painting the particles onto the different objects, I'm going to go and create a simple little scene here. So I'm going to use the object library and just add in a few assets. So I'll start out with just a plane. This is going to be the ground that we'll be working with. Next, we'll add a material to this. And since it's the ground, we'll just put some dirt and leaves on there. And then just to make this a bit more interesting here, I'm going to go ahead and go into sculpt mode here. And I'm just going to cut in a little river bed here. So it's a little bit bigger. So I'm just going to go ahead and just change the geometry a bit. And then also we'll just kind of raise up different parts of the mesh just to make it resemble a little bit more of a ground. Okay, so now that we have that done, let's just add some water into that river area. So I'm going to go ahead, rather than just typing Shift A, I'm just going to use a tool that I created called Draw Plane. So here I can just pick two points to create a plane. And functionality like this is coming to 2.9, so I'm pretty excited. It makes it a lot easier for users to quickly add different geometry to the scene. And so just to make that look like water, let's go ahead and add in a material. So let's drop that in. And that might be a little too strong of a bump, but we'll go and change that later on maybe. Now let's go and just add in some different assets here. So I've downloaded some trees off of the VizPark website, which there are some really really great models that can be used. And so here we can just drag these in. You can see that these are just single objects and they work really well within Blender. They're optimized to be easy to work with. And when you go into a rendered view, they just look incredible. So let's go ahead and just add in a few of these. And then since this is a bit smaller of a scene, I'm just gonna go ahead and use some bushes just to add in the back, just so you can't quite see behind this, just kind of a quick way to frame in this little tiny scene we're making here. Great. Okay, so now that we have that, let's add some rocks into the scene. So here we'll, I've downloaded some rocks off of Polygon and saved them to my library. And so let's just go ahead and add a few of these in. We'll just kind of position them and just kind of move them into the ground a bit. Let's kind of put some just along the water here. And maybe we'll just add in one more over here. Alrighty. Okay, so we have the beginning of our scene here. So we're just gonna create a rendering something like this. And let's go ahead and go into the rendered view. And just to brighten up the scene, let's add in a world environment. And immediately that looks quite a bit better. Let's go ahead and also add in a sun lamp as well. And here I'm just going to rotate this just to get some shadows. Maybe we will go ahead and adjust the energy just to brighten up the sun. All right, and so I think that's looking pretty good so far. Now let's go ahead and at, do the fun part by painting the particles. So in the Particle Painter library here, I've saved just a bunch of different particle setups for different nature assets. And I actually like to do this um, with the overlays turned off. And to use this library, all you do is you just drag in the asset that you want and then you're gonna select on the object that you wanna apply that to. And you can see that that immediately applies you know, that particle system across that entire mesh. But you're in this paint mode now to where 
you can just determine where you want these to be placed. So now I can just left click to just paint you know, where I want these assets to be. So it's just really quick and easy to do. And there's probably going to be a lot more functionality that can be added to this. Right now, I'm not changing the count of the particles that are being included um, as we paint these on. But I think there'd be good to have some you know, settings in here to where we can keep you know, a density for the mesh. So let's go ahead and just add in a few different particles here. And I'll add some chickweed. Again, we're just going to kind of paint some, you know, just kind of layer all of this different particles onto this mesh. Let's add some aquatic grass here. And with this, we'll just go ahead and paint this just along the water line. And right now, I also have the particle count turned down pretty low. When we do a final rendering, we can always increase that to determine, you know, just to kind of fill up the scene a bit more. But this just kind of gives us a real quick way to see, you know, what it's going to look like. And maybe we'll just add in just one more here. With that, I did that pretty quick. I'm just kind of showing how some of this functionality could work here. But even with all those assets, the viewport is still quite responsive. So an asset library coupled with the EV rendering engine makes for a really fun way of designing different types of scenes. And here, if I wanted to, I could just go into the properties and adjust the particles. So as we've painted these onto the mesh, you can see it just automatically adds these particle systems in here. And with this, we can just increase the count just to add in you know, a bit more. All right, so let's go ahead and leave it as it is there. So the scene is nowhere near complete, but I just want to show the potential of how a drag and drop asset library can provide you a quick way to mock up different types of scenes. Now, I'll have some more updates coming soon. If you have an idea for a library or have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments, or you can use the contact page on my website. I'll put links in the description. I'll be happy to chat with you about any projects that you're working on. Anyway, um, I'd like to thank you for taking the time to watch this, and I'll see you in the next one.